Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in on a Wednesday evening, April 15th, 2020, about 9.45 p.m. West Coast time, and taking a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. Quite the cluster. Look at that mess, folks, out there in the Western Pacific, in through the uh, Indonesia Islands area. A major cluster of just quakes out there. Lots of fives. Lots of fives. And uh, quite a few fo upper fours up there as well. Some major movement going on out there in the uh, fractured part of the earth. You know, just all these islands and whatnot uh, being twisted and pulled apart uh, via plate tectonics or formed. Um, all up, actually up around the uh, Japan area in into the... Uh, Lucia Islands up here as well showing quite a bit of earthquake activity just pretty much a major movement on the uh, Pacific plate uh, down here through Fiji's quieting down a little bit but uh, man I tell you what looking rather interesting over here uh, that's for sure activity out here in the west coast has not died down uh, still seeing some earthquake activity up in Idaho and it looks like a latest earthquake out there in the Texas region there, near Pecos, Pecos, Texas. No stranger to earthquakes, I guess, right? <laughs> kind of odd saying that, uh, considering that's uh, not really earthquake country, but I guess it is now, right? Um, going through uh, down here into Central America and South America region, seen some mid fives and a couple fours popping up there as well. This older earthquake activity in Chile, uh, just about ready to drop off the globe. No major uh, movement following this earthquake activity that occurred roughly uh, yesterday. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. But uh, let's see here, what do we got? Idaho. Let's see, uh, <laughs> who would have thought Idaho would be the hot topic of earthquake uh, discussions, right? Still quite a bit of movement going on up there. Uh, lots of twos, lots of threes. We can bring this map up here and we can see a little bit better detail on uh, on the flat globe. This is the one day all magnitudes here in the United States. Go ahead and zoom in here. Let's see, and like I say, these folks, uh, I know there's a lot more earthquakes going on than these uh, than the ones that they're reporting. You can see it quite often when you look at the uh, seismograph stations that I have pulled up for the Idaho area. Uh, according to this map here, the one day, only 13 earthquakes here, uh, ranging up to, uh, well, they did have a 3.5. A lot, a lot of these threes are showing up on the Yellowstone station, like I've mentioned before in the past. Um, quite a few twos there as well let's go ahead and go uh gosh darn it. i know there's way more than what they're than what the usgs is providing here i just i can't prove it i mean you have to go back and look at the um the uh seismograph stations here uh to see what i'm talking about we'll go ahead and wait till this comes back up around the bin here uh, and I will show you specifically um, what I'm talking about. Yellowstone down here, of course, I think a pretty much 3.0 and above is going to show up on the Yellowstone Station network uh, that's, that's occurring in Idaho. Any, any earthquake activity that's occurring in Idaho that's above 3.0 is going to show up there in Yellowstone. That's what I'm trying to uh, make a statement on. Mendocino, California, knocked off the air, it looks like, for now. Anyway, Haley, Idaho. This active, uh, this station here is roughly a uh, little distance little distance away from the uh, um, all the activity. Anyway, see this little spike here? Uh, see this little spike here? Possibly even this little spike here. Those are small quakes. Roughly, probably, oh man, I'm saying 1.5 or below. 1.5 magnitude and below. But there's lots of them. You can go back over the past couple hours and see that there's probably maybe 50 or 60 of them. But the USGS is not 
um, for whatever reason they're not including it on the uh, on the all magnitudes here I mean they got what did they have here a point 0.1 and then a 1.9 but there's been way more earthquake activity uh, over the last 24 hours than these folks are shooting out there on their data let's go ahead and go seven days 2.5 and above this is 2.5 and above quite a bit of earthquake activity continuing up there in and around the sawtooth fault system folks that is a, uh, a pretty good size fault system there in the state of idaho it's not a huge fault but it is a major fault out there that can cause a ruckus uh, of a 7.5 magnitude quake uh, if it decides to. A lot of this earthquake activity uh, originally started well north of the Sawtooth Fault System. It has now migrated and progressed further southward in and around on both sides, east and west, north and south down here along that Sawtooth Fault System. So the, the longer this continues, the likelihood of seeing a major earthquake out there on that specific fault increases. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of, uh, well, let me bring this up here. Take a little bit of info, take a little bit of, uh, gosh darn it. Oh, here we go. This is a little bit of information off of the Wikipedia source here. Um, and it's, uh, it's very valuable information here and it's factual. This is, uh, the Sawtooth Fault system here. It is an east dipping normal fault vertical motion which runs along the eastern base of the Sawtooth Mountains in the absolutely beautiful state of Idaho in the United States. Uh, in 2010, this is just a little uh, information here on it, Glenn and his colleagues from the Idaho State University discovered the Sawtooth Fault near the base. So this is pretty much a recent fault discovery. Uh, they discovered the Sawtooth Fault near the base of the mountains using LIDAR. Uh, they found that it could produce an earthquake measuring up to magnitude 7.5. And that two past large earthquakes likely took place on the fault around 7,000 and 4,000 years ago. The fault is a 40 mile, 64 kilometer long uh, fault system and runs near Stanley. Idaho and the Redfish Lake. Future earthquakes could be felt as far as Boise. Uh, of course then it goes to mention the uh, last month's 6.5 earthquake that struck there out of the blue that kind of triggered all this uh, aftershock activity, the swarm of earthquake activity. Uh, they do mention that 6.5 is likely not on the sawtooth fault as it had a strike slip motion rather than up down motion of a normal fault okay so yes the 6.5 i agree did not take place on that uh sawtooth fault system and we can go ahead and check that out real quick i've shown you guys in the past but we'll go ahead and do it again let's go last 30 days 4.5 and above and there you go you're going to see that um, 6.5 that struck there and shook the residents up there in Idaho well north very well north uh, here's the end of the sawtooth fault system right here Let's see if you guys can see that hold on I gotta make sure that you guys can see that in your in your view there just south of that little white circle there that was a 4.8 that struck uh, yeah looks like maybe an hour after that 6.5 so no doubt that 6.5 was well north northeast of that sawtooth fault system but it doesn't take a genius it doesn't take a rocket scientist to discover and observe that well a lot of the activity has now migrated let's go ahead and include all magnitudes here over the last seven days now my, migrated in and around that uh, that sawtooth fault system there and uh, it's it's not letting up folks it's still continuing it's uh 
You know, that right there is 7 days, 2.5 and above. Let's go 1 day all, uh, 2.5 and above there. Still continuing. Quite a few 3s in there, quite a few 2s, quite a few earthquakes not being reported in this region. But, ultimately being picked up on the seismograph stations here that I run um, and have coming through on the Haley, Idaho station which is coming up right here again another earthquake there small spike of an earthquake earthquakes are pretty much uh, recognized here on this data system as a darkened area or a spike uh, this was a large earthquake it would pretty much flatline the regular data that's coming in here so this is just another microquake but activity is much much more uh, than what the folks here at the USGS are stating so we'll go ahead and uh, let them uh, you know do the professional work but I'm here to provide the data uh, officially from the, uh, the source itself and uh, we'll continue to monitor it like I say it's uh, looking more and more likely that uh, we could see a potential for a larger quake there on the sawtooth fault system in Idaho and that's uh, something that everyone up there should be prepared 7.5 could definitely uh, do some damage. Luckily, luckily, it's out there in the middle of a uh, uh, less populated area of Idaho, but uh, still could do some damage out there in the in the uh, bigger bigger cities. Anyway, folks, um, you know, it's uh, definitely an active period out there of earthquake activity, and I think on this heightened alert out there, we should be uh, definitely all prepared. As always, I mean, if you haven't prepared already from the from the uh, you know the COVID virus going on, uh, you know, I think it's definitely a good time to stock up and prepare for um, you know potential larger earthquakes out there coming uh, pretty soon. So stay safe, one uh, everyone. I'm gonna jump off here and uh, call it a night. It's about 10 p.m. here West Coast time, so a little bit past my bedtime, man. Who would have thought 10 p.m. would be a great time uh, to go to bed? The older you get, the earlier the bedtime. And, and right now, that sounds pretty good. Have a good night, folks. Uh, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Please stay safe. And as always, like I mentioned, please have an earthquake plan out there. And uh, we'll chat you guys on another day. Peace.